Hello, welcome back to Design Hub. In the last video, we learned about some types of pipe and types of fittings, such as elbows, tees, and reducers. Let's explore further and see what flanges are. Flanges are used to join pipes to fittings, valves, and other pipes and specialty components like strainers and pressure vessels. Bolting is used to connect flanges, and gaskets or other sealing techniques are frequently used to finish the sealing process. An alternative to welding or threading separate pipe systems is a flange, which is a ring-shaped piping component. They are a mechanical, non-permanent way of combining two flanged piping components. It is a mechanical junction that can be disassembled and reassembled if needed. Hence, the maintenance can be made simpler. It is an integrated fitting with two separate sections which are the following, the sealing face and bolt holes on the flange blade. The hub of the flange that holds the pipe connections. Flange joints are among the most widely used techniques for connecting pipe to pipe, pipe to fitting, and pipe to valve. It produces a leak-free connection when put together properly, utilizing suitable parts and bolting techniques. Different flange classes, such as 150, 300, 400, 600, 900, 1500, and 2500, should be chosen based on the piping pressure. 400 and 900 rating classes are uncommon. Flanges can be attached to other fittings using a variety of techniques, each with advantages in both technology and business. High-integrity weld neck flanges, joined by a single butt weld. Slip-on flanges with medium integrity joined by one or occasionally two fillet welds. Medium integrity socket weld flanges, connected by a single socket weld. High-integrity lap joint, stub end, flanges, joined by a single butt weld on the stub end. Threaded flanges, poor integrity, one threaded end for attachment. Blind flanges, mechanically fastened to any corresponding flange. First, we will learn about weld neck flange. There are times when the weld neck flange displayed is referred to as the high hub flange. Shifting stress to the nearby pipe is intended to lessen high stress concentrations at the flange's base. Because of its intrinsic structural ability and ease of assembly, the weld neck flange is the best designed butt weld flange available, despite its high cost. The long tapered hub of the weld neck flange is well known for its durability and resistance to dishing. The metal thickness gradually increases from the weld joint to the flange facing, resulting in the tapered hub. When lines are bent repeatedly due to contraction, expansion, or other external pressures, the symmetrical taper transition is very helpful. In harsh service applications with high pressures, high temperatures, or sub-zero temperatures, weld neck flanges are typically utilized. A weld neck flange's hole is bored to match the adjacent pipe's ID. Put another way, the bore, hole, through the flange is larger the thinner the pipe's wall thickness. On the other hand, the bore through the flange is less the thicker the pipe's wall. There is not much flow restriction because the interior diameters of the pipe and the flange match. This eliminates erosion and turbulence. The pipe can be placed into the slip-on flange before welding because of its low hub. The slip-on flange, which is shorter in length than a weld neck flange and is available with a flat, FFSO, or raised face, RFSO, is used in replacement operations when joining existing equipment and in regions where brief tie-ins are required or space constraints demanded. There are two major drawbacks to the slip-on flange, though, it requires two fillet welds, one exterior and one internal, to provide it enough strength and stop leaks and its lifespan is only roughly one-third that of the weld neck flange. Due of their reduced initial cost, many users choose them over welding neck flanges. Due to the additional welding required, the overall cost after installation is not significantly cheaper than the welding neck. The dimensions of the slip-on flange can be found in Appendix A's Taylor Forge Seamless Fittings Dimensioning Chart. The slip-on flange and the socket weld flange are comparable. It was initially designed to be used on high-pressure piping systems with modest diameters, half to four. The pipe is welded into the socket after being introduced, just like with socket weld fittings. For additional strength, an internal weld is frequently used. Reduced turbulence and flow restriction are achieved by smoothing the interior weld. For carbon or low-alloy steel pipe systems, the lap joint flange is typically utilized. A lap joint stub end is needed in order to attach the lap joint flange to the pipe system. The principal applications for the lap joint flange and stub end assembly are in pipe systems that need to be disassembled often for routine maintenance or inspection. Its rapid bolt hole alignment makes it useful for large diameter or difficult to adjust pipe setups. 
In order to attach the threaded flange design, also known as a screwed flange to a pipe, a screw thread is used. The male pipe is threaded and then screwed onto the female threaded flange. A male thread is cut onto the pipe end and a female thread is cut into the flange's bore. The purpose of the illustrated blind flange is comparable to that of a plug or cap. It's employed to bring a piping system to an end. In essence, a blind flange is one without a hub or a drilled center. Blind flanges are identical in bolting pattern, have a matching face type, and have the thickness of a flange. Another way to seal a pressure vessel's nozzle opening is with blind flanges accompanied by SPWD gasket for ASME B16.5 flanges unlike API type 6B or 6BX flanges which contain ring grooves. This ring groove can rest R, RX, and BX types ring gasket. We will learn gasket type in detail in upcoming videos. At last, unlike a welded top, a blind flange is bolted, making it simple to reach the inside of a pipe or vessel. Until then learn in advance. Peace.